Now, let's first of all debunk the pay to win myth because it is not pay to win. Everything in this game can be bought with in game currency, including veteran membership. That is what veteran membership has to offer plus 25% credits in game earning currency, plus 75% war funds, don't worry about war funds yet if you're new, plus 100% rank XP, so your level. Plus 25% ribbon XP, so that's your unlocks, different guns, and whatever else. And then there are extra combat, well, an extra combat match slot. Now, I highly recommend not getting 24 hours because 6 slots of 24 hours cost the same as 30 days of veteran. And then it's better value if you go 90 days, and I've got the 365 days of veteran, which uh, isn't always available, but does come around sometimes. War bonds, don't go to them to make a profit. That you'll make a profit, but it's a small amount. And if you have a look at combat badges, there's a whole bunch of them. The most common ones that infantry use are Marathon Man, which increases your stamina, which in the long term helps your aim and lets you run further. Then there's Heavy Set, which effectively gives you more health. If you want to not die to one hit kill bolt action rifles, you want to be running heavy set. But again, you have all of these choices such as fast reload, another common. Now, if you want to see how to unlock a badge, click the badge and then there'll be a ribbon here. For example, SMG Assault, and it will show you what level you have to be to unlock that badge. And if you go on, you can unlock a gun using SMGs. Everything has like a skill tree, a ribbon tree to follow. If you want to see all of your ribbons, just click this little ribbon icon next to next unlocks. It takes a second to load, then you can see all your ribbons. Now, you can click one and then view my progression, and again, it'll show you how you can unlock things. Now, you can buy ribbon boosters and that will increase the XP gain towards the ribbon that you have bruised for for 4 hours from activation whether or not you're playing the game. You cannot pause it, you cannot cancel it, once it's activated it is activated. Alright, so let's cover some basics of HMG. The first of all tackle is the UI. This can be done to people and that makes sense why. For the basics, your starter soldier should look like this. Just have the starter gun, in for the Soviets, the SVT, and you have all of these options that you can unlock and buy eventually. Now, to know how to interact with the UI, it's pretty simple. In this case, I've got the mine bought, but you can buy whatever. You just drag and drop. Pretty straightforward. Now, if you want to modify the gun, you can click any of these icons here, and then you can look at the gun, and by clicking the mods without buying them, you can see the effect they have. The yellow line is the effect the mod will have, the blue line is what the gun is already at, the stock, ammo, or mod you haven't chosen. Scopes don't affect anything, but they do obviously give you a scope, whereas these iron sights, they don't change the visuals, but they change the accuracy and the handling of the weapon. Pretty much every mod on a gun, aside from the scope and the camo, or the skin, is not a visual change, it's just a handling change. You won't notice anything different, visually. See, the triggers will affect the RPM, the barrels will affect the range and damage, so forth. If you want to add more ammo, you just click plus or minus, depending, it will cha it'll change the equipment points that the uh, weapon will take up. You have a maximum of 10 equipment points with a infantry. Different classes have different amounts of equipment points. And also, your weight affects your stamina. You can see here the stamina is affected by what I'm carrying. I added an item and the stamina went down. I remove an item and the stamina goes up. Something that I need to point out for people 
is that grenades are horrendously expensive and you should not buy them and or use them. A standard grenade costs about 140 credits per grenade thrown and it can range from 140 to 180. I believe the RGD-33 Soviets is 180 credits. That is not cheap. You do not want to waste grenades. While we're on the topic of repair costs, let's talk about actually repairing weapons, explosives and whatever else vehicles and two. It's pretty simple. See this red bar on the background? That's the indication of how much you have left until you need to repair or unequip the item. If you let this run out, you'll spawn without the item, even if that's just an ammo mod on a weapon. If that ammo mod runs out, you're not going to spawn with a weapon. It's pretty straightforward. Now, to repair the weapon, you just click this wrench, the spanner, and then it'll take you to this page. You can set it to auto repair, which is what you want to do when you find the loadout that you like. But if you're just trying with things, do not auto repair and do not repair until you are comfortable with it. But repairing is as simple as just clicking either credits or gold and it will fill up the bar and boom. You've got maximum ammo again. If you're starting out and you've got a bit of money to spend and you want to push through the progression, again not pay to win, it's just pay to advance, there's no benefit to paying other than saving a bit of time. You can buy these bundles, for example, Soviet Steel Armor Pack, you get all these tanks, so you just immediately get a heavy tank, so you're going to be making profit pretty quickly, heavy tanks are a good money maker. And you also get these ribbons. Ribbons are... they're okay, they're good, they're not bad. But you can also go for guns, or your infantry, or your recon, or whatever class. It's just worth looking through these different options. If you're starting out, I'm obviously going to have a lot more soldiers than you. You're just going to have one infantry for one faction to start with. And then you can branch out to get more soldiers of different types and different factions. Now, to look at different factions of different soldiers, you just got the arrows on either side of this icon. Simple as that. Now, to scroll through your soldiers, you can manually do so, or you can click this icon here and choose between infantry, pilot, paratrooper, tanker, or recon. If you have generals, I'm assuming there'll be a general here, but I don't run generals, they're mostly a waste. Never mind this. In addition to looking through your ribbons through this method, or just looking at the specific weapons here. Again, you can go through the melee weapons, the guns, the explosives, and the miscellaneous. You can also click here, your player profile, and that will show you what you unlock at different levels of this. Your level is determined by your score. For the most part, it's not too hard to unlock. It's, it doesn't take long at all, really. And as you level up, your player level, you'll get rewards. Most of these are credits, then you'll get veteran, you get gold, more credits, and then war funds and veteran. Again, war funds, don't worry, that's for a later video. You're new, don't even bother. Besides, you won't even have you won't even be able to use war funds until you reach rank 10, if not later than that. If you want to buy a new soldier, just go to the bottom of the soldier list and click the plus sign for group soldier. Now, you can again choose between different factions and different classes. So I could buy a US infantryman for 46,000 credits or 550 gold. You can buy different ranks and the main difference between ranks is salary earned. So you can see 8,000 here with the rank 0 infantry. 15500 rank 12 or 1750 17500 rank 15 now with rank 0 you won't be able to give squad orders I'll get to that later but rank 12 and rank 15 because you're above level 6 you can have squad 
auxiliary seats and give squad orders. I personally recommend not ever buying a rank 15 soldier unless you just have money to spare because they are just not cost efficient. However, rank 0 is perfectly fine. Rank 12 is what I personally recommend overall because with rank 12 you get one command point which lets you have one assault team. That's for another story, but just keep that in mind. Assault teams are for war and you buy them with war funds, which is what we've discussed earlier. Now, if you want to rename your soldier to anything you want before you buy it, you can do so here. It's no biggie. It's no biggie, sure. Now, going back to not being level 6 or higher, I'll explain what that means. See here, this guy is rank 13, and if I wanted to search for, let's say, the battle, I can then see I have these auxiliary seats. Auxiliary seats are pretty important to have because they allow your squad to change from whatever you queued in as, typically infantry, to a recon or a tanker or a paratrooper or a pilot, assuming you have those soldiers. There is no reason not to equip them when you can, and they are pretty important. The Encounter Depot map is the map that you will start off with. It is one map, one objective, and infantry only. Then there are Skirmish, which are three maps with three objectives each, and they have every class, infantry, tank, every paratrooper besides pilot. Then there is Assault with every class, including pilot, and there are five maps, and they each have several lines of attack with many, many objectives. And that These three options are to search for staged, where battles are fair, so each team has the same amount of tank spawns, plane spawns, recon spawns resources in general. Now war is where that is not a thing. <laughs> war means you search for all of these but not staged. So you could get into a battle where one team has only infantry and everyone and the, inter the <laughs> and the other team has tankers, pilots, recons, everything they want. War is not something that new begin new players should look into at it's good that the developers have set it up now that it takes a while to get into a war. This game is actually a three-way and between three factions. And if I wanted to change to my tanker or recon seat, I just click my soldier and then find my tanker or recon through here. Now, let's say I want to deploy, I'll use my stock guy. I'll use my recon. I click the objective and I can spawn on the points connected to the line near the, object uh, <laughs> the objective. If my team neutralizes B3, then I'll be able to spawn between B2 and B3 over this building. Now we just started, so it's probably not going to happen anytime soon. Now I've spawned in, and if you're level 6 or higher, squad leader, you can hold Q and give objective orders. It can be defend, it can be attack, it can actually be rally, which can be used to mark enemies in the open field, which is pretty handy to do. Now in the bottom right, you can see my ammo count, my weapon zeroing, which I can change with J and K, or by scoping in and pressing spacebar, it will also auto zero into the nearest 50 meters. It also, under the ammo, you can see bullet, scope, and the uh, trigger, spring, and barrel icons. If they're white, that means the weapon has that modification. If they're grey, they aren't modified. settings that I recommend you tweak immediately. 
is go into input setting and then I'd recommend converting mount to airplane. You can change around the sensitivity and whatever else. You can also remap kits. If you want to toggle a keybind instead of holding it, simply just click the circle so it fills in and it'll be a toggle. While you're here, not that you'll have a pilot immediately unless you buy one with gold, you should, I recommend personally, changing debug to shift and changing plane to camera control. That way it's more like an armor flight control and you're not awkwardly trying to press control and shift while using WASD and flying. Anyway, if that's your choice, Old Man Snibbers has great tutorials for flying. What you should also do is, it's up to you with audio settings, it's personal, but video settings, you can change around resolution. But what you should do, because by default, the view is on a minimum, right? And this isn't, it's, it's not ideal. But drag it all the way to the maximum, I recommend. Again, personal taste, but you see more. ADS does not affect the aiming down sights or being in vehicles though. And as you can see here, it does not change while scoped in. Another thing that I should point out is there is a sort of built-in cruise control system. So if you hold down W or any key and then press T to enter chat, and you just press escape to close chat, you can just cruise control without holding any keys. Um, yeah. Some other things to note is F3 will show the kill feed and your personal kill feed. F7 shows your ping and FPS. F6 shows your detailed network connection. F11 is your suicide key. And that's pretty much it. If you want to talk to team, it's T. There is no voice chat in the game, but there is typing. If you want to talk to your squad, that's Y. And if you want to swap while you've got it in the chat, let's say you accidentally want to talk to team, but you want to talk to squad instead. You just press tab to swap between them, so you don't have to just retype it all. Right. Now, bottom left, you've got your health, which will regen in stages, but it will, won't go to maximum if it reaches a certain point. It's hard to explain, but you, you'll see, you will, you understand. Um, Bottom left is your stamina. Stamina affects your aim accuracy. Scopes away. For example, I'll run out of stamina quickly. And that's my sway. It's actually not that bad. But, yeah, no, it's bad. <laughs> if you go prone, your sway is reduced significantly. And crouch in between standing and prone for stability. Yeah, see I've given orders, I've got a teammate on a squad mate on the objective. He's green. Teammates are blue. And when he gets a kill, I get a squad order bonus because I set you. When he gets a capture or a neutralize, he'll give me another order bonus of greater magnitude. If this is just free XP and still unlocked more points for auxiliary seats. See how I've got a bonus. He'll have even more bonus because uh, that's just what he's getting. More bonus. Ooh, I'm nice. and, uh, to explain the objective system, in a staged mode, which is what you start off in. This is assault, so it's got multiple objectives. Skirmish and account encounter are different, but you will have two lines of attack unless it's the factory map, which is only one. And there will be defenders, and they'll start off with O1, O2, and possibly O3, depending on the map. But there's at least O1 and O2 on the assault maps, and then and the attackers will have the starting bases, and they'll all progress towards each other. Defenders will obviously try and defend, attackers will try and attack. Defenders can cap out attacker bases, and then they lose the resources. You can see the resources for that line at the top of the screen. 
open resources for this line, but this is a three-way so it's slightly driven. An attacking team in a three-way has to have all three objectives to win and or the enemy team runs out of lives. Now if you hold tab you can see all the team resources and how many players per team. You can also right click and then click on someone's name and you can look at favorite vehicle, favorite weapon. These are handy to know what you're up against. So you can see like, oh there's a, someone in an armor squad. Like, oh what tank is he? Oh he's got a T-3476. Oh no to prepare for that. Now defenders at the top have a timer, right? And they have to defend the, all three main objectives until that timer ends. If they don't have all of the main objectives when that timer ends, the game will continue until either team has all of the main objectives. Now attackers can win at any time by owning all three objectives, they don't have to wait for the timer. 